Hi, it's Dwyer. It's the morning of March 19th, 2024. I'm on the West Coast in the United States. Figure out the time zones here uh, for what I'm about to say. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I see as I make this video that Bitcoin is down more than $4,000 this morning. Apparently last night there was a flash crash on BitMEX. Right, folks, this is one of those spectacular buying opportunities, right? Bitcoin is below $63,000 a coin. There's going to be volatility, but just understand, when the game comes to you, you need to make moves, right? This is an aberration. Uh, Bitcoin could easily be back up $4,000 in 48 hours, such as the nature of this young market, right? Take advantage of the opportunity. Let's talk about something else, and I know I'm going to sound like the old guy here with the gray beard. You know, uh, in basketball, certain things don't go away. Kevin Durant, who's a George Gervin level shooter, right? Let me give Iceman special respect here, right? Joined the Golden State Warriors, and he always wanted to have a shootout with Chris Mullen, the dream teamer, who's a great shooter. So Mullen, who was just helping out with the Warriors, you know, old guy on campus helping the young people, um, Durant approaches Mullen in a gym. And decides, hey, let's have a shooting contest. Folks, it's on film. Please Google it. It's on YouTube here. So they had to shoot out. Old guy against young guy. Durant was on his game. He lost. Right? Bottom line is old shooters in basketball never really lose the stroke. I have little doubt. Uh, I mean little doubt that Ray Allen could get on a basketball court and after shaking off some rust, probably dust off 90 to 95% of long-range shooters, right? Reggie Miller could put down the mic in the booth, probably go to a court, shake off some rust, and be icing threes. Folks, that's the way it is. You should expect Steph Curry 20 years from now to still have more range and more accuracy than 90% of the dudes out there. Right? That's just the way it is. Folks, it's that way in boxing. When you're a blessed puncher, if you're an Anthony Joshua level puncher, you're always going to have that punch. I mean, at a minimum, you're always going to punch harder than most of the people out there. Father time's going to take a toll. Your reflexes aren't going to be what they were your stamina is not going to be what it was, right? You might not move as well as you did, but that punching power is going to remain, right? Even if you lose a little something off that punch, you still have a lot of punch. That's the situation with Mike Tyson. Folks, if you were around in the 1980s, you know this guy's a blessed puncher. Understand, Tyson iced some guys. Michael Spinks, for example, who were clear Hall of Famers. Right, Tyson fought Larry Holmes. Understand, Holmes, after the Tyson fight, would go on to beat Ray Mercer. Right, Mercer, by the way, gave. Lennox Lewis, one of his toughest fights. But understand, Larry Holmes against Tyson. Holmes starts the fight off well, I thought. Tyson catches Larry. Larry, who had been in the ring with countless guys, couldn't take the punch. Now, folks here know that I believe that Jake Paul is legit. I believe Jake Paul's straight right hand warrants an A grade. Jake Paul has one punch knockout power. I was surprised by Jake Paul's loss to Tommy Fury. 
right? That surprised me. I view Jake Paul as a ringer. He's an entrepreneur too. This is the guy who understands the dedication it takes to put on profitable boxing matches. Look at Jake Paul's body. You're not going to see a lot of fat. He's not doing celebrity boxing matches. No, this is the guy who's very serious about the craft. Right? He's a better boxer than Logan Paul, quite frankly. Right? I think Jake Paul, just off the power, is going to give a lot of boxers a lot of problems. But what I want you to do is to open your fridge and look on the side of your milk carton. Those are the guys who Jake Paul's been fighting. Right? I'm talking about right now. He has fought an Anderson Silva. Right? That was an intriguing match. But the bottom line is Jake Paul really has been fighting reclamation projects. Now Mike Tyson, just understand, it's my view that Tyson, one of the most lethal punchers I've come across in boxing, Tyson not only has an A-level right hand, folks, he has an A-level left hand. Jake Paul can have a decent left hand and have nothing remotely approaching Tyson's right hand, excuse me, his left hand. What I want folks to think about too is Tyson's a trained boxer. Tyson does things that Jake Paul doesn't think of in the moment, right? I want folks to look at Tyson's upper body. This is a blessed puncher who can hide his upper body. What's the Jake Paul fight where he's hiding his upper body, right? Mike Tyson, when he comes inside, Tyson understands Having a big punch in both hands isn't enough. He understands that he has to move his upper body. All of these films of Mike Tyson today, online, training, show Tyson coming inside and moving his upper body. He understands the importance of bobbing and weaving. Right, folks? He... He trained with Teddy Atlas. He trained with Customato. I understand his relationship with Teddy Atlas is not the best. Some hard lines have been set. But Tyson is not a guy who walks straight in. Tyson is hard to find. Now, I want people to contrast how hard it is to find Tyson's upper body with the people who have fought Jake Paul. Folks, a couple fights ago, Jake Paul was fighting Tommy Fury. Do you really believe Tommy Fury would have a prayer against Mike Tyson? I don't. Fury doesn't have the punch. Tyson would walk through him. Understand, the last time we saw Tyson in the ring, in a long fight, he was fighting Roy Jones. Who is the Jake Paul opponent who's as good as Roy Jones? Now understand, Jones and Tyson were in there, you know, they're, they're friends. Uh, they did the venture together. But you and I know, they ripped off Tyson that night. With all due respect to Roy Jones, and understand, Tyson had to go find Roy Jones, right? Roy Jones is moving in the ring. Roy Jones isn't stupid enough to just stand in the pocket against Mike Tyson. Tyson realizing that it's hard to hit Jones in the head, right? I understand as Jones slowed down, Antonio Tarver, um, Glenkoff Johnson found Jones's head. But just understand it's hard to hit Jones in the head. Understand, too, even an overmatched Jones was able to go the distance with Joe Calzaghe. So what does Tyson do against Jones? Tyson goes to Jones' body. And he does it like you would expect Mike Tyson to do it. Two-handed attack. Right, folks? 
Tyson's fighting better opposition than Jake Paul is today. Forget the age on the birth certificate. Today, Tyson's fighting better competition. In the limited time, Tyson returned to the ring. Today, Tyson has a better left hand than Jake Paul. That's today. Right, folks? I can just say in terms of punching power, right? I do believe Jake Paul is punching power. But he's proved it against people like who? Nate Robinson? You know Tyson's punching power. Tyson has proved it. Tyson has proved it against real heavyweight fighters. Even the fights Tyson's lost. The Evander Holifield fights. Folks, Holifield's a great fighter. Right, Holifield's one of those guys who's deep in the pocket on Mike Tyson. Tyson's complaining about headbutts in the fight. Think about the bravery it takes to fight a puncher like Mike Tyson and to know where to place your head deep in the pocket against him. Let me say this too. Tyson late in his career. Danny Williams. I always thought, always thought that Danny Williams was rough and tumble. Tyson's dominating that fight then Williams is able to turn it around. Do you feel that Jake Paul has the physicality that a Danny Williams had? Right, folks, Kevin McBride physically is much bigger than Jake Paul. Right, that's the very end of Mike Tyson's career. Before he loses to those two guys, the guy who beat him was a Hall of Famer, Lennox Lewis. Right, so you can imagine my surprise, right? And this is one of those things where you heard me mention Bitcoin earlier. I believe the game is coming to me on this fight. I think Jake Paul has bitten off more than he can chew. I think Tyson wins this fight. I believe it's going to be an adventure for Jake Paul to get through the first three rounds, right? Right? The way Danny Williams beats Mike Tyson is Danny gets the daylights beaten out of him early. Danny survives the storm and then turns that fight around. The question is, can you survive the storm? Right, folks, it's an open question on whether Jake Paul makes it to the fourth round. He's not fighting Anderson Silver here. And somehow the casino is giving me a plus 160 on Mike Tyson? You mean to tell me I get a boxing Hall of Famer against a young guy who's an entrepreneur, who has a great right hand, but who hasn't exactly been fighting Dimitri Bevo? Right? Jake Paul is now fighting at Cruiserweight. Uh, he hasn't been in the ring with Jay Opatia. <clears throat> He hasn't been in the ring with Maris Breedis. Folks, he, he hasn't been in the ring with Honey or Kevin Lorena at Cruiserweight. You mean to tell me a guy who has been fighting the Nate Robinsons of the world is going off as a favorite against Mike Tyson? Folks, what, what planet are we on? I wanted to take a full hedge. I thought maybe there's a remote possibility, remote possibility that Jake Paul runs and is able to win a decision against Mike Tyson, right? Remote possibility. I wanted to take the hedge. My casino was <laughs> wise enough to just offer the winner and the loser, right? So I'll be on the lookout for a hedge. But I fully expect Mike Tyson to win this fight. I believe it's Christmas in March for me to be able to get a plus 160 on Mike Tyson. I understand. I had Evander Holifield against Victor Belfort. Holifield looked bad in that match. He did. Right? I'm sure a lot of young people are spooked. They're looking at Tyson's age and they're saying, man, Tyson's in his late 50s. Right, Tyson's in his late 50s. How's he going to compete against this guy? 
Right, folks, I'll just tell you. Former light heavyweight champion Billy Kahn, a guy who fought Joe Lewis, held his own that first fight, was in a restaurant, and some thugs came in to rob the restaurant. They encountered an old guy, much older than Tyson is now. They encountered Billy Kahn. Billy Kahn roughed up the young thugs. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, Billy Kahn knew how to fight. He had been a professional prize fighter. He had certain skills that the young thugs didn't have. Right now, I'm just telling you, Billy Kahn is not remotely the puncher. Mike Tyson is, right? Billy Kahn against Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis was obviously the, fight, the puncher, right? The fighter and the puncher, quite frankly. Um... Mike Tyson against Joe Lewis, I believe, would be able to match Joe Lewis's punch. You're dealing with a puncher here, right? He's older, but he's a puncher. He has a bigger punch than Evonda Holifield has, right? Holifield was more technique when he was younger, right? Holifield should have beaten Victor Belfort. First of all, right, I'll give Victor credit on the upset in my eyes, right? But let me just say, Tyson, you're talking about a blessed puncher, right? For those who don't know, Tyson was in earlier generations Anthony Joshua in terms of punch, right? Tyson's a blessed puncher, just like you see Gili Zhang, who's older than most, who's a blessed puncher, right? I'd certainly take Gili Zhang over... Younger, Jake Paul, right? Just like you see, bless punchers. Now, folks, you don't want to get hit today by Luis Ortiz. He's 44, right? You don't want to get hit today by Mike Tyson. Let me just say, too, that Tyson is the older guy who keeps himself in great shape. Just look at Tyson's body. Folks, he's aged well. He works out. He still has the hand speed. So, I'll be the casino's huckleberry. Right? This is like Santa knocking on my door to deliver a gift. You're giving me better than even money odds. Tyson's actually the underdog in the fight? Worse yet, you're giving me a plus 160. You're giving Tyson less than a 40% chance of winning this fight? After Tyson beat Roy Jones, and then, of course, they had celebrity judges who ruled that fight a draw, right? Look at that fight. Tyson beats Roy Jones. You're giving me that fighter now? Why? Because one guy's younger? Folks, I mean, I don't get it, right? Just like I don't get Bitcoin dropping $4,000 overnight. There's some things in life I don't get. I don't get this. The bet I'm recommending here is Tyson, simply to win, plus 160. We'll worry about the hedge when they actually have the bravery to post it. But Tyson, 160, I'm locking this in now. I imagine as the world wakes up, as it seems to have, for the Usyk Fury fight. You notice Usyk was up around plus 150, now he's the favorite at minus 115. As the world works up, uh, excuse me, wakes up to the fact that Mike Tyson should never be a big underdog against a guy who, you know, is fighting Tommy Fury, right? That should never happen. And it's happening right now. As the world wakes up, I don't think you'll be able to get these odds later. Let's just say that if the odds go the other way, and if I see Tyson suddenly is a plus 170, a plus 180, I'll be increasing my bet on this fight. Right? Jake Paul has an A-level right hand. Mike Tyson has an A-level right hand and left hand. Let's go further. I think today Mike Tyson has more hand speed than Jake Paul. 
right? Jake Paul's opponents stand around, right? Tyron Woodley tried to be on his front foot against Jake Paul. That's probably the best front foot Jake Paul has faced, right, folks? I, I would take Mike Tyson's front foot over Tyron Woodley's front foot. Right? Jake Paul hasn't faced anyone like this. Right? Professional prize fighter with a big punch. Let's not get carried away. I know Anderson Silva beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. That was a big match. Right? If you look up Silva, you're going to find out that before his MMA career, he actually had a professional boxing match. Right? Let's just say... I think I'd be able to take Anderson Silva's punch better than I'd be able to take Mike Tyson's punch. Understand, too, let's say Jake Paul figures out how to hide his head, right? He, he did not against Tommy Fury, but let's say he figures out how to hide his head. How's he going to hide his body? Understand, against Roy Jones, Mike Tyson had to think about Jones's left hook. Jones has a beautiful left hook, right? He had to think about Jones's countering capability. Against Jake Paul, I think Tyson could take his chances with Jake Paul's left hook. I think Tyson just has to focus on Jake Paul's straight right hand. Let me also say, too, think about the number of rounds. I know Tyson got stopped by Danny Williams and by Kevin McBride. He went the distance against Roy Jones, folks. Right? I think Tyson has a lot of pride. It's one thing to decide that you're not going to continue against a fellow professional prize fighter. A mouthy entrepreneur guy who's dabbling in boxing is not someone you're going to say no mas against. Right? That's just not going to happen here. I believe Tyson is going to be on his front foot, folks. That's a hard front foot to stay away from. Even today. I like Mike Tyson over Jake Paul. I have a lot of respect for Jake Paul. Right? I admire entrepreneurs. I like how Jake Paul's going about it. Right? His events look fun-filled. Right? But boxing has a serious side here. You're dealing with a legend and dealing with Mike Tyson. Tyson's going to be on his front foot and he's not fighting Alexander Usyk. He's not fighting prime Evander Holyfield. He's not fighting Lennox Lewis here. He's fighting Jake Paul. I'm expecting Tyson by stoppage. I personally will be surprised if Jake Paul is anywhere close to 100% at the end of the third round, right? You look at Tyson, folks, he's in shape. I have no question on his punching power, even now. Just like I have no question on Chris Mullins' ability to nail jumpers right now. There's some skills that just don't leave you. Shooters are always shooters. Heavy punchers always hit harder than the average guy. With Tyson, understand, it's hard to find his upper body. Tyson comes in and he's moving his head. It's hard to find his upper body. Tyson can fight low. Tyson is sudden. If you hide your head, Tyson will go to your body. Look at his fights against Brian Nielsen. Look at his fight against Frank Bruno. Don't take legends lightly, even when they're in their late 50s. I like Tyson, plus 160. You've got to be kidding me. I'm taking that all day. Let me hear from you. That's the way I see it. Let me open this up to the world here. They obviously came up with this line because people actually think Jake Paul is going to run through Mike Tyson. If you're one of those people, explain it to old timers like me. Right today, if LeBron, and LeBron's a great, but if LeBron said, hey, I'm going to have a shooting contest against George Gervin, 
Guys like me are going to see the betting spread. If I see George Gervin and I'm getting better than three to one, <laughs> I'm taking that bet against a current NBA All Star. Now, if LeBron has never been playing against the NBA, if LeBron has been playing exhibitions against guys who aren't exactly NBA caliber, then if, if you're going to give me a plus 160, I'd take George Gervin over LeBron in a three-point shooting contest. I'm taking Mike Tyson at plus 160 over Jake Paul in a boxing match, and I feel good about it. If you disagree, tell us about it in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.